What's happening guys? So uh, when I originally recorded this, there's a huge lag between the audio and the video and I decided that it's just too hard to follow so I'm gonna pretty much watch the video and uh, record a new voiceover for it. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna just jump into this. Uh, we're gonna be talking about configuring a router, specifically a uh, Linksys router in this situation and mine is the E4200. I will also discuss a little bit of Netgear, but um, we'll get into that when the time comes. So to start off, we're going to uh, go on to the start. There we go. So type in CMD. That's going to open up our command prompt. And uh, we're going to type here ipconfig space forward slash all. There you go. And that's going to give us all the network info. Now, um, we're really looking for the default gateway, which is right there, and that is uh, the default for, uh, I think, all Linksys routers. So from there, we're going to go and we're going to open a browser, because we're going to use this IP address. Let's open the browser. Come on. Come on, bro. Open the browser. There we go. And uh, you're going to go to the address bar, and you're going to type in that default password, or not password, IP address. And there it goes. And there it goes. Now, um, Netgear IP addresses are a little different. One of those ones is a zero. I forget which one, but look on the router itself for that info. So over here, the username uh, is going to be admin, and the password by default is admin, but I've changed mine, so mine's going to be different but the default is admin admin for Netgear routers it is admin and uh, password so Linksys admin admin Netgear admin password so okay here we go this is uh, your home page for your router and uh, this is the basic very basic uh, stuff right here and uh, what we have is uh, your IP address which uh, you can change if you want that is a router IP address not the IP address of your uh, modem so um, so yeah that's not the IP address given by your ISP so if you want you can change that you don't really want to mess around with any of those other settings um, this is pretty much just the uh, you know the root of it and right there where it says maximum number of users you can change that to however many people you want to access at the same time that being said let's go into wireless I have to keep up with this um, wireless is the main focus of this video and what we want to do is we want to stop your neighbor stealing your internet so what we have to do is we have to establish SSID don't mind the two configurations I have here I have a dual band, dual band router don't worry about that you're gonna have one of these most likely unless you're using the same router as me so right there we want to change that SSID to something that you or your family can uh, figure out easily like that you know you don't want to have anything too confusing usually the default is like Linksys with some numbers or something like that so um, mine says Saco virus because I want to confuse people maybe they think it's a real virus there's some idiots out there who could believe that so <clears throat> we're gonna have that there and um, like I said have something that you could relate to your family could easily spot <clears throat> and uh, make sure you save the settings after we switch through every tab and uh, for wireless security you want to have WPA2 uh, WEP is old school it's really easy to hack these days you don't really want to mess with that so uh, WPA2 we're gonna go mixed mode because I just think it's easier and uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna set up a passphrase and uh, that passphrase is not the router passphrase that is the wireless internet passphrase so when you see your SSID in your uh, uh, wireless uh, network adapter when you look for a network to a wireless network to sign into that's going to be your password right there. That's not my real password, but nonetheless, I do not like fish at all, unless it's in a fish stick form. Funny enough, I do like every other seafood, including octopus and eel. But that's, let's not get into that. So yeah, see, there's my SSID. Uh, since my uh, laptop could catch 2.4 gigahertz, it shows Saco Trojan rather than Saco Virus. So uh, there's the password. They're the same for each because you never know which one you're going to get. Forrest Gump reference. 
and uh, guest account. You you may or may not have this. This is a very limited account that you, your guest could use if you want to allow that. That's the default password. I didn't choose that. So uh, I don't have it on because if you're using my internet, you're I don't I don't care if I give out the password because people don't even remember it half the time. Okay, so uh, security you want to leave these at default. Uh, this is your parental controls. This is pretty useful if you're if you have kids around. So uh, what you can do is you could restrict certain websites at certain times on certain days, and I think that's really cool. If uh, there's children in this house. I would be using it, but um, there's really nothing to worry about if you want to block Facebook or YouTube or whatever. Um, this is where you do all that. And there's specific time intervals, specific days. It's pretty cool, I think. So, yeah, there's a you get a chosen amount of URLs you could use. You can't block the whole World Wide Web. I mean, I'm sure there's a way you could, but I don't see why you would want to do that. Um, next, we've got applications and gaming. If you uh, want to do some port forwarding, or such this is the place to do it um, it's really not that big of a deal to do port forwarding but um, next is our administration tab over here this is your router password as it says right there now uh, like I said default is admin admin change it to something good do not have it the same as your wireless because I'm sure somebody will catch on to that eventually and mess around with your settings in here so you even you can't access it until you reset the modem um, not the modem, the router. So yeah, pick something um, fairly easy for you to remember and don't tell anybody else unless you have more than one administrator that's going to be working with the router. So there you go, that's the uh, that's the root of uh, the configuration right there. Um, yeah, that's pretty, pretty much it. Now um, we're gonna jump into f uh, firmware. Uh, not firmware. We're gonna go factory defaults first, I believe. And that is if you um, if you screwed up somewhere, uh, for some reason your internet is not working. You don't know what settings to mess around with. You just you went crazy and you clicked everything you could think of and messed around with all kinds of settings. You could go back to the factory default, and uh, that will in fact set everything back to factory defaults, like it says. Um, that being said, let's move on to firmware. You could download firmware from the website and then choose the file and do all that, or you could use the software that comes with Cisco routers, and you could just simply click upgrade firmware from the software. Uh, I don't think I show the software in this uh, demonstration, but it does in fact come with software, and um, yeah, that would be a lot easier than downloading and choosing the file. And this is just the status of your uh, internet as of the second you watch this. Let's see what's going on. And then, um, yeah, like I said, there's a the maximum number of users that you would like to use your internet simultaneously. Default is 50. Um, you're never going to hit, I mean, I don't know where, you, actually it's possible. I guess if you do have this in a small business, you could hit 50. But if this is in a home, um, you got to be pretty crazy to have 50 users. Even with, if you have five family members that have a laptop, a desktop, and a cell phone all connected at the same time, you're still not going to hit 50. So it takes a lot of devices. I didn't even. Uh, yeah, you you have to have some fast internet too if you're having 50 users. Um, but yeah, that's the juices of it all. This. I suggest everybody to have a password on their wireless internet because these, I mean, I'm sure your neighbors have a open wireless internet that you probably have used before. You know, you don't have to hide it. It's okay. Um, I, I do remember a case where somebody sent a, a I think it was a threatening email through u using a neighbor's uh, wireless internet and uh, the police actually came to the neighbor's house and questioned them about it and they had no idea what was going on because their wireless internet was open somebody just probably drove in front of the house and sat in their car with the laptop sent the email from there without the neighbors even knowing but that's uh, that's another reason you wanna make sure you um, have a wireless internet password so yeah um, 
that's pretty much it. Um, make sure your router password is not the same as your wireless. I want to emphasize that because, uh, like I said, someone will be smart enough to try it out. I know I, I have, and um, I haven't succeeded yet because people are smarter than that, but I'm just warning you, just throwing it out there. You can have it as the same password. That is completely up to you. And, um, yeah, like I said, um, if you do, for some reason, want to have everything back to factory settings and you can't even access your router, uh, you forgot the password or whatever the situation is, you can, in fact, go to the physical router and uh, there should be a tiny little button you have to hit with a pen or a pin. And uh, that will reset everything back to the default password and uh, username, which is admin admin for uh, Linksys and uh, admin password for uh, Netgear. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please like if it helped you out. And uh, leave a comment if you need any extra assistance. I'll be happy to help you guys out. So yeah, thanks again.